Is this? It's working, okay. Hey everyone from the internet, it's David. And for a year and a half consistently, and I've been putting it off because I'm like, I don't want to do a video on that. It's not that big of a deal, no one cares, but I keep getting it. I got two within the last week. Do a library tour, and so, I'm gonna just do a simple, quick library tour and I'm gonna just pan some stuff and do voiceover and just show you what's in my library. Before you see, especially the Bibles and the commentary series again, don't just assume that I'm like a rich guy. I'm just a guy of priorities. And so I explain all that in the how to build a library on a budget video. And so I'm gonna walk you through those. And then again, two guys that have impacted my library more than any one single person is Leonard Ravenhill, Wesleyan guy, and R.C. Sproul, which is a reform guy. Reformed academic world colliding with the Wesleyan revival world. And so you're gonna see that in my library. Uh, book genres, I don't really just have an appetite for, not saying they're all bad. I just don't have an appetite for them and there's so much to read. And so I really prioritize my reading and I read stuff that just lights me up. And so things like self-help, do not light my spirit on fire. I don't have a huge, huge appetite because of that for too much like life application stuff. Again, not saying that's bad or like homiletic driven commentaries on the scripture. I like exposition because I just want to dig into what scripture says and then through prayer, I want to trust the Lord and forming that. So I don't have a lot of sermon outlines or sermon writing things. I just like exposition. I just, I love the word. I want to know about the word. And so those things, I don't have really any or a whole lot on my bookshelf for those things. But anyway, I'm just gonna get right to it because I didn't want this video to be too long. This isn't like the biggest library you've ever seen. It's not the smallest library you've probably ever seen. That's just, I'm only 10 years old and the Lord, I got saved on October 1st, 2009. My heart's been lit on fire ever since. And so I'm not a seminary guy. I am the senior pastor of a house of prayer here in San Antonio. And so, but again, like I have degrees, but one's in criminal justice, the other one's in human resource management. So I would love to go to seminary maybe to read, uh, learn Greek or Hebrew at some point. I know there's online classes to dig in, but until then I'm kind of dependent on what the word study series shows me and all that stuff. So anyway, this is just all built because I'm hungry. That's it. And so I appreciate men on fire, whether they're seminary, whether they're degreed or not degreed. If you're on fire, you command my attention. If if you're on fire, if you're a man, if you're a man from the past and you were burning to the end, you command my attention. And I pay attention to guys like that, that uh, regardless of their theological articulation on certain things I may or may not disagree with, the, the fire gets my attention, the passion, the life captures my attention. And then there's room to agree or disagree with things. And so I encourage all of you guys to have a good chunk of your library of guys that you might disagree with to let it refine your thought process and your thinking. I always let those things in discussion with people that I don't necessarily agree with. Just search me and refine me. Either it refines my language and my understanding on why I believe what I believe, or if I'm searching for truth, what in the world is the harm in changing my mind? If what I thought I believed was truth is found wanting, and then just jump over to the truth side. It's not that big of a deal. And so anyway, I'm going to get behind the camera and then do the voice over thing as I'm just kind of like panning through some stuff. I'm not going to talk about every single book, but on the lower shelves where I have the smaller individual books, I'm just going to pan and you can pause it if you really, really want to know. But uh, there's been several that have been asking for a video like this and want to know what books I read and have read and all that stuff. And so I've read the huge majority of these and then the commentary series I'm always using as a commentary series. Again, I think the value in commentaries is having multiple commentaries, and so that's something I still plan on growing and expanding in. So anyway, I hope this is enjoyable for you. If not, oh well, but here it is. What are you, are you laughing at me? Oh, my wife thinks I'm funny. Do you think that's genuinely funny, or do you think I'm stupid funny? Okay, she's genuinely laughing at me. I made my wife laugh. All right, we'll go look at the library. So there's my pedal board and flag. That's some artwork I got while I was at Jerusalem. I might do another video on my art pieces, but you might be thinking, whoa, that's a lot of Bibles. Hey, there's that Allen 
that I still have to do a review on right in the middle of that stack. But yes, I have two preacher's Bibles, some more Allen's, uh, and then some older Bibles that I use, some I travel with, some really good study Bibles. Got an original American Standard there, one of the teacher's ones that comes up on eBay. Uh, Treasury of David by Spurgeon, my favorite commentary on Psalms by far, and then some more Spurgeon sermons, which is pretty inexpensive on christianbook.com. Then another really good one, Spurgeon series, Miracles and Parables of Our Lord. So that's about my Spurgeon collection there. I've got the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. It's uh, pretty good. I reference it quite a bit. And then, whoa, more Bibles. Look at that Allen in the middle of the stack of those Skylers. Some more Bibles. Some more Bibles. Most of these are in videos, so I'm not going to talk a whole lot about them. But anyway, I do lay them like that because I use them all frequently. You're probably not even believing me right now, but I use them a lot, and so they all get rotated around the stack. And then the New International Commentary Series. That's the New Testament in red. The Old Testament is in the blue beside it and below. And this was actually a gift, a graduation present gift from my parents when I got my human resources. And funny thing, that little Old Testament uh, survey book or explaining the Old Testament, I have never read that, but it just goes good with that series where none of the other volumes will fit. <laughs> so that's why that's there. Then a Moffat translation my dad gave me and another Schuyler hardback I'm using to read the audio Bible out of. And so that hardboard uh, Canterbury is amazing. And here's some of my tools with some books on top. You can pause it and see each one. That one that is uh, titleless there next to the interlinear is A Life and Diary of David Brainerd by Jonathan Edwards. That uh, word study series is one of my favorite tools in the history of all the universe. I love it. Some other study Bibles. And then here's some uh, books I've put together. Um, and just to stir the pot, one of those spiral bound books is uh, When Heaven Invades Earth by Bill Johnson. Yes, I have some Bill Johnson books, and uh, Jesus Culture by Banning Leapshire, they fell apart. Were some of the first books I read in my early days of my walk. And so again, pause these. I think there's one there by Henry Scogel that doesn't have a title on the spine. It's a book on prayer that Leonard Ravenhill had recommended. And then going up to the next one, there's my olive wood and pit minions. The olive wood I just got from Jerusalem. And then those airplanes, uh, my dad flew that one on the left, the 130, and then that one in the middle, the T-37, was an instructor, and my grandpa flew both those on the right as well. I have over like 4,000 hours in a Huey UH-1N in Montana as a cop, uh, just riding in the back, and so if anyone knows where to find a model of a UH-1N, let me know. So that burgundy one on top was a New American Commentary. Now here's my Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones shelf. These are all Ephesians and the red Ephesians uh, 1 through 6, you can see there. And then this colorful series everyone always asks me about is Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones on most of Romans, not all of it. And then there's the Septuagint with the English next to it. It'll be more valuable to me when I can read Greek, uh, D.L. Moody biography on top. And look at that, Charles Finney and John Wesley right below Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. I just, I get a kick out of that and some other good books, but my wife just got me all completed works of John Wesley, all 14 volumes for my Christmas present, which I was so excited for that. And then uh, I just started reading through Charles Finney's Systematic Theology as well, because even I love Finney and Wesley, and so I get a lot of uh, questions on Christian perfection. And so I wanted to read their articulation on the on the thing and I'll just say there's a lot of misconceptions and we use the excuse of nobody's perfect for a lot of justification of slavery to sin. Anyway, the pulpit commentary, it's an older one, very inexpensive, but like it, uh, Leonard Ravenhill is the one that pointed me to it. He said it's worth its weight in gold and so that got my attention by a man on fire. Um, also that commentary on Revelation, Four Views has been handy and then the IVP Bible background commentaries, those two volumes are really, really good. Um, did I just skip a shelf? I just skipped a shelf. Maybe I'll go back to it, but there's some stuff on the bottom. Pause it if you want to know what it is. That book, What's the Point, by Misty Edwards at IHOP, is shockingly good. 
I did miss that shelf. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to go and uh, fix that. Hang on. That is shocking to me that I missed this shelf because it's a funny shelf. It explains like the whole contradiction of my library because there you got John G. Lake, Smith Wigglesworth, and David Wilkerson getting a little bit more conservative, some Puritan books, a Catholic mystic like right in the middle, Bonhoeffer, Reinhard Bonnke, a Methodist hymnal, and that's a couple other Bibles up top, the Young's Literal and the Worrell translation. Anyway, there's the rest of the pulpit commentary, some of the Old Testament, and then some other commentary on Leviticus and stuff. I love the law of God. Um, some study Bibles that I reference up there from time to time were given to me by a dear precious friend. And uh, so it's such a treasure to be able to have those. The rest of the New American Commentary up there is a DVD series on the Concord series. That is one of the best video series I've seen on helping men get free from lust and porn and sexual addiction and we go through that as a regular rhythm in our ministry uh, commentary on Zechariah and the voice translation um, don't really reference the voice that much so it's over there but I like that Zechariah commentary some more Bibles you can see what those are there's the only church Bible I have um, and a rock from Israel that a friend gave me before my trip there a couple weeks ago some more study Bibles. Uh, that's the Matthew Henry commentary set. That uh, one, two, three, four, five, something. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Volume set, the maroon spines. I usually look up the best looking edition and then find those on eBay because I like that. The way those spines look on the bookshelf. And then uh, there's, I'm building up a word biblical um, set as well. Just one volume at a time. I went with Chronicles, Psalms, and Hebrews. Uh, to me, those are some of the most priestly books in the Bible, and so I wanted to start with those for uh, building that series up. And so, anyway, I like it. You just have to re be able to read the Hebrew and Greek, which I don't, so they're a little bit harder for me to get through. Uh, some more Bibles and notebooks and uh, some teaching from my friend at IHOP. Yes, I like IHOP, they're not a cult, my gosh. Don't believe everything you read on the internet. There's stupid people on the internet. There's smart people on the internet too. Some classes, That Excellencies of Christ by Alan Hood is shockingly amazing. Um, another rock from Israel, In Light of Eternity there, Leonard Ravenhill, Essential Works of Wesley, so that's a quick reference, right next to a little bitty John Calvin book and some Jonathan Edwards. There's the, uh, that series on the left in the brown is Dr. Michael Brown's um, Answering Jewish Objections to Jesus, which is really good. And then those other commentaries, the anchor and the interpretation, I usually find at used bookstores. And some Bibles from Grandpa that I inherited when he passed on. I didn't uh, want to see those get out, leave the family. And uh, just some other books. You can pause that one and the, that old one with the blue and the gray is The Burden of the Lord by Ian McPherson, which is a good book on preaching. And there's a book of common prayer in the middle of that one. And then come down, there's the Mirror Bible, some John Piper books, Sparkling Gems, some other good ones, Dead Sea Scroll references. All that paper back there is a lot of my old sermon uh, writing when I used to type them out. Now I just write them in a notebook. There's some more binders that hold sermons and my nine millimeter Beretta Nano, my bass amp. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so that's it. There's some patches from my unit in the Air Force. When I was in Montana, keyboard, picture of Jesus that made me cry when I saw it, Taylor 714, more artwork, Dean EVO special, and my BC Rich bass with all onboard Bartolini electronics. And so, anyway, that is my library. If you have any other specific questions, like what's that, just ask in the comments and I'm happy to help. All right, y'all, that's it. I'm sure it will continue to grow. It's just been 10 years in the making of little bit by little bit. Uh, if you want to know how I built this in 10 years, just financially speaking, then go watch my, and maybe I'll just put it in the description, how to build a library on a budget. It's really not that complicated, but I'm not going to spill everything out right now. It's just 
you spend money on what's important to you. That's it. But anyway, if you like the music underneath this channel, you can go download it at forloveoftheword.bandcamp.com. Or if you enjoy the ministry and want to support me monthly, you can jump over to Patreon. That Both those links will be in the description. And for as little as $2 a month, you can support the work of the ministry. You can support the work of this channel and then get access to a little bit more content, a little bit more videos, free music downloads, or the audio Bible as I'm working on that and all that stuff. So anyway, those links are in the description and in the pinned comment below. And then y'all have a fantastic day. Hope this was helpful, meaningful. If it was boring and you made it this far, then congratulations. Go buy yourself a badge and put it on your sash. All right, internet, I'll see you guys later. Bye.